In this video, we're doing another partial fractions problem, but we're talking about distinct quadratic factors. So we've been given this problem, the integral of x squared plus x plus 1 divided by quantity 2x plus 1 times quantity x squared plus 1. And we need to use partial fractions to evaluate this integral. So remember with partial fractions, what we want to do is come up with a partial fractions decomposition. We want to simplify this fraction into its partial fractions decomposition so that we can integrate that decomposition instead of this fraction which we can't integrate as is. So how are we going to use partial fractions? Well what we need to do first is recognize that we have distinct factors because we have a factor of 2x plus 1 and a factor of x squared plus 1 so they are distinct they're different from each other and then we have to recognize that 2x plus 1 is a linear factor because this is x to the first power and then x squared plus 1 is a quadratic factor because we have an x squared term. So here's what our decomposition is going to look like. First of all, we're going to take the original fraction. We're going to put that on the left-hand side of this new equation that we're going to create. So we're going to have 2x plus 1 times quantity x squared plus 1. Okay, so the original fraction exactly as is. But on the right-hand side, when we have a linear factor, we just put a single constant in the numerator. So we're going to do a divided by 2x plus 1, this single constant over the linear factor. But then we're going to add to that, here's where we put the quadratic factor, x squared plus 1. But whenever we have a quadratic factor, we have to say bx plus c. So we started with b because a was already taken. If we had another linear factor here, we would say plus d divided by the linear factor. And if we had another quadratic factor, we would say ex plus f divided by the other quadratic factor. So that gives you an idea of how to set up a decomposition with linear factors and quadratic factors. So now that we have this decomposition, we need to simplify it. And what we'll do is we'll multiply both sides of this equation, as always, by the denominator from the left-hand side. So 2x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. When we do that, when we multiply both of these factors by the left-hand side, we're going to get this entire denominator to cancel because this 2x plus 1 will cancel with this 2x plus 1. This x squared plus 1 will cancel with this x squared plus 1, leaving us with just x squared plus x plus 1, the numerator from the left-hand side. Then over here, when we multiply both of these factors by a divided by 2x plus 1, we'll get the 2x plus 1 to cancel with this 2x plus 1, leaving us with just a times x squared plus 1, the other factor. Then here, when we multiply 2x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 by this bx plus c divided by x squared plus 1, we'll get this x squared plus 1 to cancel with this x squared plus 1, leaving us with just the factor of 2x plus 1. So we'll get plus bx plus c, it's important to put parentheses around that, multiplied by 2x plus 1. Now what we want to do is simplify the right-hand side, which we'll do by multiplying everything out. So we'll distribute this a across the x squared plus 1, and we'll get ax squared plus a. We'll FOIL out the bx plus c times quantity 2x plus 1, and we'll get bx times 2x is 2bx squared. We'll take bx times 1 and get bx. We'll take c times 2x and get 2cx, and we'll take c times 1 and get c. Now what we want to do is collect like terms. So we're going to take all of our x squared terms together. So we'll say a x squared plus 2b x squared. That takes care of these two. Then we'll take all of our x terms together. So we'll say, let's go ahead and put parentheses around these. So our x terms, we're going to have bx plus 2cx. That takes care of these two. And then we'll group together our constants. So our constants are going to be a plus c, taking care of our last two terms. Then what we want to do is factor out the x variable from each of these sets of parentheses here. So here we're going to factor out an x squared. So we're going to say a plus 2b will be the only thing left when we factor an x squared out of ax squared plus 2bx squared. So we pulled out the x squared. We were just left with the a and the 2b. Here in the second set of parentheses, we're going to pull out an x, leaving us with only b plus 2c multiplied by x, and then we'll leave our constants as they are. So now what we want to do is recognize that over here on the left-hand side, we have 1x squared plus 1x plus 1. What we want to do is equate coefficients from the left and the right-hand side. 
So we can say that the coefficient on x squared on the left-hand side is 1. The coefficient on x squared on the right-hand side is a plus 2b. We can say that the coefficient on x is 1, and the coefficient on x is b plus 2c. And then finally, that over here the constant is 1, and the constant over here is a plus c. So now, with that in mind, what we can do is we can write equations where we set these things equal to one another. So we'll go ahead and say a plus 2b is equal to 1, b plus 2c is equal to 1, and a plus c is equal to 1. Now with this in mind, let's go ahead and eliminate one of the variables. We have three variables, let's go ahead and eliminate a. So this last equation here, a plus c is equal to 1, we'll go ahead and subtract c from both sides and we'll say a is equal to 1 minus c. Since a is equal to 1 minus c, we can plug 1 minus c in for a into this first equation. So instead of a right here, we're going to get 1 minus c plus 2b is equal to 1. If we rewrite this, we'll keep the 2b, we keep our minus c, so we'll say 2b minus c, and then we'll subtract 1 from both sides and we'll get 2b minus c is equal to 0. Then we'll take our second equation here and put it with it, so we'll say b plus 2c is equal to 1. Now what I want to do here is multiply through this second equation, the left and the right hand side, all the terms, by 2. The reason is because if I multiply everything by 2, I'm going to get 2b, and then I can subtract one equation from the other, I'll get 2b minus 2b, which is 0. In other words, I'll get my b's to cancel, so I'll be able to solve for c. So if I multiply through by 2, instead of b, I'll get 2b, instead of 2c, I'll get 4c, and instead of 1 here, I'll get 2. Now what I can do is subtract this bottom equation from the top equation, and the result is going to be 2b minus 2b, which is 0, so those cancel. Negative c minus 4c is going to give me a negative 5c, and 0 minus 2 is going to give me a negative 2. If I divide both sides by negative 5, I get c is equal to negative 2 divided by negative 5. The negative signs cancel, and I get a positive 2 fifths. Now I need to use this value of c to find values for a and b. I already know a is equal to 1 minus c. Since c is 2 fifths, I can say a is equal to 1 minus 2 fifths. I can call 1 here. Instead of 1, I'll call it 5 fifths, so I have a common denominator. And I'll get a is equal to 5 minus 2 is 3, or 3 fifths. Now let's use this second equation here again, this one, to find a value for b. We'll go ahead and subtract 2c from both sides, and we'll get b is equal to 1 minus 2c. Plugging in 2 fifths for c, I'm going to get b is equal to 1 minus 2 times 2 fifths is 4 fifths, so I'll get 4 fifths. I'll change my 1 to a 5 fifths so that I can have a common denominator, and I'll get b is equal to 5 minus 4 is 1, so I get 1 fifth. So now I know that a is 3 fifths, b is 1 fifth, and c is 2 fifths. With that in mind, I can plug into my partial fraction c composition, and instead of a here, I'll put 3 fifths. Instead of b, I'll put 1 fifth. And instead of c, I'll put 2 fifths. And now this value here, this entire right-hand side, is my partial fractions decomposition with the values that I found for a, b, and c. This is what I'm going to use to replace the original fraction, and this will be a much easier integral to evaluate. So now instead of the original integral, I can say the integral of, and take this whole value here and find that. So I'm going to say 3 fifths divided by 2x plus 1 plus 1 fifth x plus 2 fifths divided by x squared plus 1 dx. Now we can work on simplifying this integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to split it into two separate integrals and we're going to factor out the constants. So we're going to bring this 3 fifths out in front and we're going to say 3 fifths times the integral of 1 divided by 2x plus 1 dx. Then I'm going to say plus, here I'm going to factor out a 1 fifth, so I'm going to say 1 fifth times the integral of x plus 2 because when I multiply 2 by 1 fifth, I get 2 fifths, this value right here. So I have to say x plus 2 divided by x squared plus 1 dx. 
Now before I start evaluating integrals, I also want to split this second integral into two integrals of its own. So whenever you have multiple terms in the numerator of a fraction here, you can split them into separate fractions. So instead of x plus 2 divided by x squared plus 1, I can say x divided by x squared plus 1 plus, in a separate fraction, 2 divided by x squared plus 1. So if I rewrite this, I'm going to say 3 fifths times the integral of 1 over 2x plus 1 dx plus 1 fifth times the integral of x divided by x squared plus 1 dx plus, and I have to keep my 1 fifth here, so plus 1 fifth times the integral of 2 divided by x squared plus 1 dx. Now this first integral I can easily evaluate using my formula here. Remember that the integral of 1 divided by x is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x. In other words, whatever's in the denominator there is going to go inside of my absolute value bars in the argument of my natural log function. So I'm just going to take this 3 fifths, leave it there as a coefficient, so 3 fifths, and then I'm going to take my denominator 2x plus 1 and say natural log of the absolute value of 2x plus 1. Now the only thing I have to be careful of is I always have to apply chain rule and divide by the derivative of the denominator. So here if you just have x by itself, the derivative of x is 1. So you would divide this by 1, but of course that doesn't change anything, which is why you don't see it. But here we have 2x plus 1. The derivative of 2x plus 1 is 2. So I have to divide this by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So that takes care of our first integral. The third integral here, the last integral, keep in mind that I can pull this 2 out in front. So I can call this 1 and change this to a 2. So now I have 2 fifths out in front. We know that the integral of 1 divided by x squared plus 1, that's a very common function, that's the inverse tangent function. So I can say plus 2 fifths times arctan, or the inverse tangent function of x, when you have the exact form 1 divided by x squared plus 1, the integral of that is the inverse tangent function of x. So that takes care of our last integral there. And then this middle integral here will evaluate using u substitution. So for now, let's just go ahead and say plus 1 fifth times the integral of x divided by x squared plus 1 dx. Now for that integral, we'll say u is equal to x squared plus 1. The derivative of u du is going to be equal to 2x, and then we add the dx. And then if we solve this for dx, we get dx is equal to du divided by 2x. So now if we go ahead and make our substitutions, for that integral we have that coefficient of 1 fifth times the integral, we'll keep that x in the numerator, so x divided by, we know x squared plus 1 is u, so we'll have u in the denominator, and dx is going to be du over 2x, which we just found here. And then we'll go ahead and add our other two terms. Now inside of the integral, you can see we're going to get x in the numerator to cancel with x in the denominator. This 2 here we can pull out in front. This is a 2 in the denominator, so it comes and moves into the denominator here. We multiply it by the 5, and we end up with 1 tenth times the integral of 1 over u du. Here we're going to multiply this 1 half by the 3 fifths, and we're going to get plus 3 over 10 natural log absolute value of 2x plus 1 plus 2 fifths arctan or inverse tangent function of x. And then here for our integral, the integral of 1 over u will be natural log of the absolute value of u and then we'll go ahead and add to that the other terms. We know that u is equal to x squared plus 1, so we'll say 1 tenth natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1. We'll add these other terms, so 3 tenths natural log of absolute value of 2x plus 1 plus 2 fifths times inverse tangent function of x, and then we have to add the constant c to account for that constant of integration. Now you could leave your final answer just like this, or if you wanted to, you could factor out a 1 tenth. And if you wanted to factor out 1 tenth, you would pull the 1 tenth out in front like this, and then we need to make sure we pull it out of every term. So obviously it's going to come out of this natural log absolute value of x squared plus 1. 
Then we're also going to pull it out of 3 over 10. The 10 is going to get pulled out here from the denominator, but the 3 in the numerator is going to remain. So we have plus 3 natural log absolute value 2x plus 1. And then here we're pulling 1 tenth out of 2 fifths. So how do we do that easily? Well, basically what we're saying is we're going to factor a 1 tenth out of the 2 fifths. So what do we have to multiply by 1 tenth in order to get 2 fifths? And if you don't know how to do that in your head, here's what you would do. What do we have to multiply by 1 tenth to get 2 fifths? And then you would just multiply both sides by 10 and you would get x is equal to 20 over 5 or x is equal to 4. So when we factor 1 tenth out of 2 fifths, what's left over is 4. So we would say plus 4 inverse tangent of x and then we would close our brackets and then say plus c. And that should make sense to us, this 4, because if we multiply 4 by 1 tenth, we get 4 over 10, which is the same as 2 over 5. So this is your final answer with the 1 tenth factored out in front in order to simplify it. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.